Whether you love it or hate it, Resident Evil is a franchise that is never going away, and with Resident Evil Village on the way in just a few short months, I couldn't think of a better time to talk about what Capcom gave us last year. The remake of Resident Evil 3 came out 21 years after the original, and is a great reimagining of the events that happened in Raccoon City back in the old game. Well, at least what it actually includes. This game skips a lot and is unfortunately really, really short. The original PS1 game wasn't exceptionally long, it was about 8 hours, but on my first playthrough, I finished this game in only 4 hours. When you consider this was a full price game when it came out and that you still need to pay around £20 plus for it today, you can see how the initial reception of the game was a bit lukewarm. Despite that, it still is an amazing game and really only gets me excited for the future of Resident Evil. I've been working on my own virus, it's just like the one in Resident Evil and it turns people into mindless zombies and it's extremely infectious. If just one drop got out into the air, well, it could wipe out the best part of a country. That of course would never happen. After all, I made this virus so I would know exactly what not to unleash on the world. Yeah, this could be bad. I should probably go warn my family about the deadly virus. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. The Resident Evil 3 remake begins with the T-Virus getting unleashed on Raccoon City. This highly infectious virus is incredibly hard to contain and dehumanises people quicker than a really fast dog with very long legs and sunglasses. The introductory video at the start of the game shows the city starting to fall to ruin, with news reporters not knowing the full extent of what's going on and for some strange reason this video is all live action. This isn't anything new for the Resident Evil franchise but I thought it was interesting to mention nonetheless. The opening to the story obviously isn't anything new, I mean this is a remake of a two decade old game. However, it feels like it was done right here, and I like the way Capcom set up this game. This installment of the Resi series happens before, alongside, and after the events of Resident Evil 2. You even visit the Raccoon City Police Department at one stage of the game, which I found pretty interesting because you get to see Marvin Brana from Resident Evil 2 get bitten, and you visit the RCPD before Leon gets there in the second game. Was that confusing? I'm not sure, it makes sense to me, but I mean, I've played both of them. Yeah, this is probably gonna come back to bite me. You play through the campaign in typical Resident Evil fashion. There are two characters you can play as. I kind of feel that Jill is the main character. You start off as her and I'm not sure if it's just me, but it feels like you play as her more than Carlos in this game. Carlos is the other main character and we'll get to him in just a second. Jill is a STARS operative which stands for Special Tactics and Rescue Service. STARS operate separately to the RCPD but they have an office in the police station. Jill is a pretty incredible character because she seems f***ing invincible. I mean seriously, she has been slammed, thrown and has had explosives detonate right next to her and she's still kicking. I want to know what sort of training you get in STARS because Christ, she can really take a beating from Nemesis, and we'll get on to Nemesis later, but first, Carlos is the other half of the story, or should I say the other third. It could be me being more efficient at speedrunning Carlos' part of the game, but I'm pretty sure he gets less screen time here. Carlos looks nothing like he did in the original game, and it honestly feels like the designers took one look at a picture of Bob Dylan and decided, yep, that's who we're going to copy. It's essentially the human equivalent of copy my homework but make it a little different. Carlos works for UBCS, or Umbrella Corp, and he has been tasked with evacuating as many survivors as possible out of Raccoon City, and he and Jill cross paths pretty early in the game. His commander in charge asks Jill for help, and that's how she gets roped into things. The Resi developers always have a talent for making two different stories interweave and cross over with each other, and the remake of 3 is no different.
I would love to say I warned them in time. I didn't. Good thing I was able to quarantine off my bedroom from the rest of the house. I'm safe in here, which doesn't make much sense because this is the room the virus broke out in, but anyway, where were we? Any good story that was thought up in the 90s needs an evil Russian, right? Resi 3 has Nikolai, and without giving too much away from the story, he's a bit of a C word, and I don't mean crook, because you know what they say, you can't spell country without tree. He's a pretty good antagonist for the story, and I can't say much more about him because I don't want to be the one to spoil what happens with him. You're probably wondering what the gameplay is like in Resident Evil 3, and it's pretty familiar if you've played 7 or the remake of 2. This is a really good thing because this style of gameplay really works, and it was a breath of fresh air for the Resident Evil series. I'm not saying 5 and 6 were bad games, but they had mixed reception, and they were definitely more action than horror games and that's okay it has its place but it's not for me and i think the more classic tank controls of the early resi games wouldn't be popular today when games have evolved and we have so much more fluent control schemes now so i'm really happy with the style they went for with this remake in typical resident evil fashion however there is tough inventory management limited ammo and the constant choice of deciding if you're going to craft more healing items or craft more ammo because you won't have enough space for a lot of both it's a lot of having one or the other also in typical resident evil fashion there are puzzles scattered around the game but honestly there aren't too many in three and that is of course because of how short the game is. There is no point in me dwelling on puzzles because it's not my job to figure them out for you. It's a quick google searches job or maybe a guide. Do people still play games with guides? This style of gameplay can create some intense situations that will have you on the edge of your seat. You need to constantly be thinking about will I use these bullets to take out this enemy now or will I need them later on for one that I won't be able to just dodge around. It keeps things exciting. Dodging around enemies however is considerably easier in this game when compared to the remake of 2. Hitting the right shoulder button will make Jill or Carlo sidestep. Doing this right as an enemy swipes at you will execute a perfect dodge. Time slows down for a couple of seconds and you will get this sort of slow motion chance to stick a couple of bullets in their head. Is this too easy of a move? I'll let you decide that. I mean, timing is everything here so unless you really practice it, you won't get it every time. When playing as Carlos, he doesn't dodge, he literally punches them and knocks them to the ground. It's kind of funny to watch. After pulling off this move, you yet again get this slow motion thing to get a few shots in with the added benefit of them needing to get back up again. This game, like I mentioned, is very short, and yeah, that's not great, but the different sections it does offer, the various parts of Raccoon City, that incredibly creepy power station, and the later sections, which I don't want to spoil on you, are all extremely diverse, interesting, and the graphics. Lately Capcom have delivered with amazing graphics every time, be it Resident Evil, Devil May Cry or whatever else, and this game is no exception. You can see from the footage that it all looks great, and while I am playing on a relatively powerful PC, I had to turn things down to 1080p for this recording and it still looks great. At least dogs can't get infected. He was the only family member I was able to save, but that's just life I guess. This is shaping up to be a lot like Resident Evil 3 to be honest, only everything is happening in my house. Or I guess you could say my residence. My residence evil? The enemies you encounter in this game are, yet again, what you would expect from Resident Evil, that seems to be a recurring theme here. The undead who have been infected with the T-virus and all they want to do is eat you. They serve a pretty big threat because not only does getting grabbed by one take away a chunk of your health, but it also prevents you from moving for a few seconds, which can really intensify a situation when there are multiple enemies surrounding you. This forces you to think fast but more often than not, you can bail yourself out by hitting R1 and dodging out of the way. The threat, like I said, is there, however, this footage you are seeing is from assisted mode. I needed to get footage for this video, obviously, and I can beat the game on assisted mode in about an hour and a half, so it made sense because it meant I could capture more areas of the game easier and a bit quicker. In assisted mode, enemies do less damage. You get a really nice auto aim to help you get those headshots and ammo and healing items are a little bit more common. There are two enemies I would love to tell you about but if you pick up this game after watching this video and you haven't played the original, honestly 
they will be worth the surprise, so I don't want to ruin that on you. I will talk about zombie dogs, however. Yes, they made a comeback and are just as quick, vicious, and ready to eat you as they were in Resident Evil 2. I like their existence in this game, because when the first encounter with them happened, it really took me off guard, and that sort of thing is really welcome in a survival horror game. They just add to the overall experience. are not immune to the virus. <sighs> Good coffee though. Something that is kind of important to a survival horror game is the horror aspect. And I mean, this game made me jump a few times but there is one section that creeped me out more than any other section in any other video game. The part where you have to get the subway power back online. It happens just after you have been introduced to those parasite enemies who infect Jill by sticking their tongues down her throat. But that's what is good about it because you have to essentially enter this creature's home and there are about 20 of them. The catch 22 of this situation however is that you will get infected by parasites every time one of these disgusting things gets a good attack on you, forcing you to use a healing item otherwise you'll just die. And then Jill gives you the beautiful sight of her yakking up these parasites and whatever she had for dinner yesterday. This instant need to heal after one attack from these enemies makes this part of the game extremely tense, especially on normal mode. In assisted mode you just gun them down with your assault rifle. Whenever you're flipping the switches on the actual power breakers you get this quite zoomed out camera angle where you can see the creatures crawling up behind you when you're trying to fix them and this was definitely the best horror centric part of the game for me. I could get used to this kind of lifestyle, I mean the world is gonna fall, that's inevitable, but I've got this nice house to myself and I've got some good games to play and I can do what I want, when I want, things could be worse. The only thing is I'm missing a few guns, but apart from that I'm all set for the rapture. Resi 3 doesn't have many guns in it, in fact you'll probably only come across about 4 in your playthrough but they all offer something interesting. The first one you will likely be using the most in your playthrough is the good old fashioned Resident Evil pistol. This is the G19 pistol, it shoots fast and precise but can lead to some intense situations if you miss your shots. The shotgun, which you can unlock pretty early on, is my personal favourite and can be used to get you out of a pinch quite fast. Finally, there is the assault rifle, which if you play on assisted mode, you get from the very start of the game. It is insanely overpowered and turns Resi 3 into an action game, which is cool if you're into that, and there are a few more guns that I won't spoil on you. These weapons are no good without a super unreasonable enemy to have to fight over and over and over again. And that's where Nemesis comes into play. You are introduced to him at the start of the game and he is a ruthless super mutant with, well, Brad puts it very well at the start of the game. Tim to find though, but right now it's got a hard on for the only two stars left in town, you and me. I'm not sticking around. Nemesis is essentially there to stop people that may expose Umbrella for what they'd done. Jill was one of the mansion survivors from the first game, so she has already seen some crazy things created by the Umbrella Corporation, so Nemesis will never be done until it gets what it wants. There are multiple different boss fights with Nemesis throughout the game, and he is relentless. I like him a lot more than Mr. X from the remake of Resi 2 though, because Mr. X terrifies me. The fact that he is always following you, at least in this game, you get a break from Mr. Binbag here. His role in the game is so important that the original is called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis and it's kind of hard to execute something like this so I'm glad that Capcom was able to make Nemesis feel pretty intrusive but not too intrusive to the point that I got sick of its existence or to the point that it ever felt tedious. Basically, it just worked really well. This was a really short game, but honestly it felt short but sweet. The record section in the main menu adds a lot of incentive for replayability because every time you complete one of these records you gain bonus points which can be spent on little perks for new playthroughs. I'm saving up for the infinite rocket launcher but it has been four playthroughs and I still can't unlock it, which I guess 
adds to the value of the game because I will be playing through it a fifth time to do more of those challenges. You know, despite causing the world to fall, I really enjoyed the remake of Resident Evil 3. It shows a continuation of Jill's story which I like because she's a main character in the very first Resident Evil game and it's hard not to like this new style of Resi that we keep getting from Capcom. It's scary when it wants to be, ridiculous when it wants to be, and challenging when it needs to be. And oh yeah, I forgot I made this vaccine. It probably would have been helpful earlier before I shot everyone. Oh well.